that probability is a measure of uncertainty of events in a random experiment. Also, we have established the equivalence between the axiomatic theory and the classical theory of probability in case of equally likely outcomes. Now, we will be talking about an important concept of probability called the conditional probability. So, what is conditional probability? You would have seen a notation like this. P of A vertical bar B. We pronounce this as the conditional probability of A given B. This vertical line means given. Now, what does this probability mean? It means, given that the outcome of a random experiment satisfies B, how likely it is that it will also satisfy A? In other words, what are the chances of the occurrence of the event A when given that the event B has already occurred? If A and B are dependent events, the knowledge of the occurrence of event B is going to impact the chances of occurrence of event A. Let's understand this using an interesting example. We have Cheteshwar Pujara batting in the first innings of an international test match. How likely is it that he will score a hundred given that he's already scored a half century? Now here we have to find the probability that Cheteshwar Pujara will score a hundred in the first innings given that he's already scored 50 runs. To find this probability, we need some information about his past performances, like how many times has he converted a 50 into a 100 while batting in the first innings. This data is easily available on the internet. Based on our research, it turns out that out of 76 first innings in which he's batted, 31 times he scored half centuries. And 16 out of the 31 times, he's gone on to score 100 runs or more. Now, what can we do with this data? This data can help us to predict the likelihood of whether he will score a century in the ongoing first innings of a test match after scoring 50 runs. The probability that he will score 100 or more runs, given that he scored half a century, will be simply given by 16 by 31 where 31 is the total number of times that he'd scored a 50 in the first innings, and 16 is the number of times he's converted those 50s into 100s. The probability is approximately equal to 52%. Now, the probability of Pujara scoring a 100 given that he has scored 50 in the first innings is not equal to the probability of Pujara scoring a 100 in the first innings. The probability of Pujara scoring 100 in the first innings is given by 16 by 76, which is 21%. Thus, we can see that both these probabilities are different. Now let's see if we can represent this mathematically. If we consider A to be the event that Pujara scores 50 runs, and B be the event that Pujara scores 100 runs, Observe that 16 here is the number of times Pujara scored 100 and 50 runs. Hence, 16 here is nothing but N of B intersection A. And 31 is simply the number of times he scores a 50. Hence, it is N of A. Now we can adjust N of S in the numerator and the denominator as shown. Hence, we get P of B intersection A upon P of A. So, the probability of B given A is given by this formula. Here, the numerator P of B intersection A is the probability that Pujara scores 150 runs. That is, both the events happening. And the denominator P of A is the probability that Pujara scores 50 runs. Hence, with that, we've seen a practical example of conditional probability. We hope that you've enjoyed this video. Now next, we will learn the standard approach for finding the conditional probability in simple examples. So, see you in the next video.